Miami Beach, baby. Oh, that water feels so good. It's like warm, but it's not too warm. Oh, it's so nice. You're probably wondering why I'm on vacation. But I'm not actually on vacation. I'm at work right now. I'm working hard right now. I'm working overtime right now. Hey, do you guys need tables or like cutting boards? Look at that crane. It's not often you get to see a crane like moving and swinging and doing stuff. I didn't think I was going to the beach today, but here we are. Hello, friend. Goodbye. Hello, seagull. I have a cricket I'd like you to meet. There's a little lizard with a curled tail. There's so much cool wildlife around here. I'm in Miami for a very important reason. Community service. That's really why I'm here. Yeah, I know, we're trying to run a business and crush the 2022 holiday season, but you know, giving back is important to us. It's super important to us that we use our talents and abilities to give back. So what great debt do I owe the wonderful city of Miami that I'm punished here for my community service? Well, I'm in Miami because that's where the National Hurricane Center is. And if you've been a longtime subscriber of our channel, you'll know that Jenny and I have a part-time job where we fly through hurricanes for research. And this year, I got the wonderful opportunity to come down here to Miami to learn how the forecasters take the data that we use from the plane and implement it into their forecasts. I mean, if you're gonna study tropical weather, you gotta be in tropical places. It's not my fault. I had no idea that the data we collected from the airplane was used by so many people, not just the forecasters, but there's computer programmers, modelers, climatologists. There's all sorts of people that use the information that we collect. And it's been really eye-opening to see just how many people are using it and getting excited to see it. Our computer makes a little noise when uh, certain reports come in and the forecasters know just by the sound of the ding the computer is making what type of report and they all rush into the office when it's something that they want to see. So much damage and destruction is caused by these storms. And that's why it's so critically important that we do what we do. And there's some things that we can only get from the center of the storm. Satellites can't pick it up. Microwave radars can't pick it up. We have to fly into the storm to get some of that data. So after a few days of this, um, we noticed something that the computer models were showing. There was a huge storm headed right for the mainland US. It was just a computer bottle. It was like nine days out. We had no idea what the actual atmosphere was gonna do, but we knew something was up and they wanted to get more information about it. I knew that I had to do something else. This is great and all, but I don't hold a candle to these forecasters. I'm really just getting in their way. I need to do what I've been trained to do and that's collect data. So I need to get back to Mississippi and fly this storm. Ladies and gentlemen, in preparation for departure, please check the seat back and keep up on the other passengers. Two windows chains are open, seat backs are in the upright and locked position. Another hotel room. Our unit is stationed out here in Mississippi on the coast. This is where I'll be flying the storm. I actually need to go to sleep because in about 12 hours, uh, I'm supposed to get a call in the middle of the night letting me know that we're gonna go fly the mission. So I gotta go to sleep. Good morning. Are you ready to fly through a hurricane? I know I am. Anyway, first matter of business is I gotta get rid of this beard. The reserves is nice and all, this ain't gonna cut it. I always wonder if I should keep the mustache, but then I realize I'm not as good looking as Miles Teller needs to go. Okay, so now I'm gonna get on the computer and check the National Hurricane Center's discussion and see 
where they think it's gonna go and what they think the storm is gonna do in the next few hours. I also don't think I've mentioned this yet. Um, I'm a meteorologist. We're what's known as the flight director. So we're basically telling the pilots where to fly the airplane based on the meteorological data that we're getting off the instruments. But yes, I am air crew, but no, I'm not the pilot. If you wanna know more, we have a video from several years ago about what exactly we do on the plane. I'll also check a website called Tropical Tidbits to look at uh, previous missions through the storm and see what their airplanes found. That way I'll have a better understanding of what we're going to see when we get out there. It's always so hard to know how to feel before a flight because I'm excited I get to do my job, but I hate that I have to do my job because that means that some people's homes are going to be destroyed. Um, and it really hurts because I've been making some TikToks and a lot of people are just making a joke out of it. And um, for a lot of people, it's probably not gonna be any more than a thunderstorm and a, and a light rain shower, but for some people, it's gonna completely destroy their entire lives. So I hope the people making jokes are the ones that are out of harm's way. We do all this, we go to these great lengths to try and help people stay informed and get out of the way. And you can just only hope that they choose to do the right thing. At least they have the option, you know, that's, that's why we're here. I'll put a graphic on screen, but I should be catching it as it comes off of the northern coast of Cuba, and uh, we'll see how she fares. Sometimes when it goes over land, it can dry out. I, we'll find out. later. Ian is stronger than it was before. We waited on the storm all morning to come off the north coast of Cuba and once it finally did it started getting stronger and stronger. The wind speeds went up, the pressure went down, and the convection started getting way more organized. It's so bittersweet because the storm is incredible. It's breathtaking. When I saw the blue sky in the eye, I literally started to choke up because I just, all I could think about was how could something so beautiful be so destructive? And I had to do some news interviews on the plane, which was a cool experience. With hurricane season officially in full swing, it's prime time for the brave group we call the Hurricane Hunters. So the mission for us is to uh, gather recon data in the belly of the beast. Rough and sometimes amazing, as you can see here during one of the eyewall incursions. They're absolutely breathtaking. It's, it's a little bit um, bittersweet as you see something so magnificent, but you know that it's really going to do a lot of damage for a lot of people. The storm was uh, rapidly intensifying, but the rain uh, was so intense that the radar was only seeing just beyond our nose in horrible turbulence, um, worst weather I've ever seen. Um, we got rocked, I like to say, like a boxer. But I just, I could not get out of the back of my head that in just a couple of days, people's lives are going to be turned upside down.
this one hits hard because I literally watched this storm from just a fluke on a computer model to barreling towards southern Florida. This thing that is nobody's fault, that no one caused, is just gonna wreck so many people's lives. I have a tough time letting go. Like, I just get to go home as all these other people are suffering from something that they never even caused in the first place. But I have responsibilities. I have businesses and employees and Jenny and Bruce and family and just like all sorts of things. This, doing this is cool and all, but this is preventative. It doesn't really do a whole lot as far as like helping out people who actually lost stuff in the storm. And that's when I just have to remember that the reason we are starting and running businesses is so that when crazy things like this can happen, we've got the money to, to change it and make some sort of positive impact. We don't have enough money right now. We don't even pay ourselves very much. How in the world are we one day gonna be able to help people after a gigantic hurricane levels an entire neighborhood? Watching Hurricane Ian grow from just a blip on a computer model to making landfall twice was really emotional for us. After seeing the destruction from the storm, we just feel compelled to do a little more. A few of us from our unit are getting together and forming a nonprofit organization called Cat5 Care. No matter the size of the storm, victims of tropical weather disasters should receive Category 5 care. Cat5 Care is a new organization not associated with the military at all. We're doing this on our own time with our own resources. All proceeds will go to hurricane relief in the affected areas. We're starting with Hurricane Ian and will continue to help those affected by tropical weather disasters in the future. So you can head to cat5care.org and you can see we got a couple different t-shirts you can buy. You can also make a direct donation that goes straight to the organization on the ground helping the people that are affected by Hurricane Ian. It would really mean a lot to us if you considered donating and if you can't, just share the video on your own social media and we would really, really appreciate it. Hey guys, I was just kidding about all that hurricane stuff. I'm really here to pick up our new yacht. It's this one. I was gonna buy the tiny black one, but then I saw the bigger one and I thought I just have to have it. So we're actually here to pick up a yacht in Miami. Community service is overrated. The community should service me.